This screencast is to demonstrate how to process a group of digital objects called a transfer through Archivematica from ingest to storage and access. What you see here is the dashboard interface between the user and the system's microservices. See these series of tabs along the top here are what we'll use to navigate through ingest and then upload to archival storage and to your access system. The other interface is your file browser, which I'll go to now so that we can begin processing a transfer. So first, you'll copy the folder containing the transfer and paste it into the folder called standard transfer. The user manual online on the Archivematica wiki illustrates other ways to begin transfer, but this is the simplest, so this is how we'll start. At this point, if you'd like, you can go into the transfer's metadata file and add submission documentation. Submission documentation can include anything like donor agreements, transfer transfer forms, copyright agreements, correspondence, or other documentation relating to the transfer. Any SIPs that you create from this transfer will automatically contain copies of any of this documentation. As you can see, the transfer has disappeared from the standard transfer directory. We'll go back to the dashboard interface, where in the transfer tab, you see that our transfer has come up with a bell icon beside it. The bell icon indicates that it's time for us to make a decision. If you click on the magnifying glass, it opens up the microservices. And if you pull down actions, our options are reject transfer or transfer complete. We're going to select transfer complete so that the transfer can continue processing. So as you can see, as the microservices come up during transfer, digital objects are moved into Archivematica and they're run through UUID assignment, checksum verification if it has checksums attached to it, package extraction, that's the unzipping of zipped or otherwise packaged files, virus checking, format identification and validation, and metadata extraction. For more information about the transfer process, you can go to the manual on our wiki. At the end of this process, we'll be given another choice when the bell icon pops up, and that choice will be to create one or more SIPs. So we could decide that this transfer photographs can, will just make up one SIP and continue processing it without doing anything to it, or um, we'll have the choice to make multiple SIPs from it by breaking it up. In the file browser, it would show up in SIPs under construction, and we could move anything around, make several SIPs, or if we want to make it one SIP but make changes, we could do that here. And it would all be recorded in the METS file and carried throughout, and all SIPs created from the transfer would contain information about the original transfer. And I've already set one up. Oh, there we go. So as you can see for this transfer photographs, it shows us it's UUID and that there are microservices awaiting user decisions. So let's go back to the expanded tab, expand the microservices. And at create SIP, we're going to just choose the simplest method, and this means that we're not going to do any editing to the transfer um, or reject it. We are going to create one single SIP and continue processing. So I've already actually sent it um, previously into ingest, just so that we would have one ready to go. So as you can see,
as you can see file permissions have been set to make it easier to go through the system um, the SIP has been shown to comply with the way that the SIP is packaged and set up in Archivematica and it's waiting for normalization Prior to normalization, you must include any metadata that you'd like to add to the SIP. Otherwise, you won't be able to add anything until you get to your access system. So to add metadata, you can click anywhere on the line and it will take you here where you can list the microservices, list and add rights metadata, and list and add other metadata. In this case, I went into it before and assigned a title, Photo sam Sample for Screencast. Um, and I'll just scroll down so you can see the other options. And I've already saved this, so I'm just going to go back to the Ingest tab. And you can edit any of that metadata as long as you haven't normalized yet. We are going to go ahead and normalize. And at the normalize step, you can normalize for preservation and access. You can reject the SIP, um, that's after having reviewed it in your file browser. Um, you can make access only, so only make dips. Um, you can do no normalization, or you can only do your preservation ape. At this point, we're going to do preservation and access. And as you can see, it's executing the commands. If you're ever interested in what tasks are ongoing, you can click on the cog, and it will expand and show you what's happening. At the end of normalization, Archivematica generates a METS and PREMIS file and bags and compresses the archival information packages and packages the DIPs. And you have the option then to store your APE and upload your DIP. So as you can see, we now have to, sorry, awaiting a decision from us and our options at approved normalization are to reject the SIP or approve normalization. Um, at this point you can view your APE in your file browser if you like but we're just going to approve normalization and move on ahead. So as you can see, we're ready to make a decision about uploading our DIP. The APE is still getting compressed, but we can go ahead and begin the upload DIP process. Oh, and look at that. Now we're ready to store our APE as well. So first let's store our APE, since preservation is our priority. And we will also choose under Actions to upload our DIP. As you can see, this says upload the generated DIP to ICA Atom qubit using the permalink of the target description. I pasted the permalink into mousepad early on so that I could just grab it and paste it in. And you have an option here to create an intermediate level description. 
Um, if you don't do this, it will just uh, attach these objects directly to the permalink to whatever level that is. Um, in this case, I want to create a file um, within this series, I think subseries actually. So I'm going to choose create intermediate level of description. And I'm going to choose upload. Um, I see Adam, um, also known as Qubit, is packaged with Archivatica for demonstration purposes, but you don't have to use that for your access system. This is the archival storage tab. And it shows you the size and UUID for any apes you create and the date you created them. It's used to browse and retrieve archival information packages. And let's see. Just waiting for our dip to show up. As you can see, our dip has been uploaded, and you can see that it's completed successfully, and so has the ape storage, which is why we see it in the archival storage tab. And if you go into the preservation planning tab, you'll see all of the preservation tabs for file types, but also if you show advanced details, you'll be able to see success rates for those normalizations. And then you can see here, this is our ape. This is the URL for the dip that we have assigned when we uploaded it and the status of the upload. And then let's see, let's refresh this page. And there you go. As you can see, the title we gave, Photo Sample for Screencast, shows up at a file, as a file under the subseries 6 Photographs, Graphic, and Artifacts. Um, that's the URL that I pasted in when we were given the option to upload DIT. And this is, these are the thumbnails in our access system for the, eight, for the DIP that we just uploaded. And that's a very basic example of running all the way through Archivematica 0.8. For more information, go to the wiki. And mm -hmm. Archivematica has a manual. Um, and we also have a user list that you can access from there, www.archivematica.org. Thank you. <laughs>